gone are the days where you can just tick off the box, oh, I'm Catholic, oh, I'm Irish Catholic, oh, I'm, you know, Lithuanian Catholic, whatever. No. None of that means anything unless you're an intentional disciple, unless Jesus Christ is Lord of your life. And the only way to get to know Jesus is to spend time with him. In the Word, in the sacraments, especially the Divine Liturgy. So these are my seven ideas for prayer. You know half of them or more, maybe you know all of them, but I think it's good to get back to the basics. You know, when world-class magicians rehearse, they always do simple moves over and over and over again. Jugglers will juggle one or two balls over and over again just to get those those chops down, that mental muscle, as secure and, and permanent as possible. Likewise, our Christian life has to be intentional. It has to be a matter of practice. This is why we say we're practicing Catholics, right? As uh, my former guest, uh, Harry Connick Jr. said, yeah, I'm practicing Catholics. I'm Catholic. I'm going to keep practicing until I get it right, which sounds about right. So number one, the most important prayer of all is not just a prayer, it's a divine action, and that is the Mass, the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass, where the one perfect sacrifice is represented on our altars before our very eyes. It's not repeated. We're not killing Christ again. We're entering into that mysterious memory, that anamnesis in Hebrew, where we bring back into our midst the one perfect sacrifice that Jesus made on our behalf. And we're with him at the Last Supper, and we're with him at Calvary. Just remember the Blessed Mother, who witnessed the worst liturgical abuse in history as she watched her son tortured and murdered on Calvary on Good Friday. So the Mass. Especially remember to make a thanksgiving after you receive Holy Communion, after the final blessing, after the last song. Don't run out for the game. Don't, you know, dash to the eighth sacrament known as coffee and donuts. Sit back and just say thank you. Our family does a holy huddle. We do a simple little prayer as a family before we um, move on. It's very important to recollect yourself before and, of course, focus on during and remember in Thanksgiving after. So number one, the Mass. Number two, the Rosary. The Rosary has a phenomenal track record in producing sanctity. If you commit yourself to praying the Rosary daily or through the week, whenever you can, you know, get it done, get her done, then do it. If you're praying the rosary regularly, you're not going to sin as much. If you're sinning more, you're not going to pray the rosary. They're really oil and water. So, it depends on which you want. You want to sin less and love God more through the rosary, or do you want to sin more and love God less? The choice is yours. Highly recommend the rosary. Uh, the Divine Mercy Chaplet, number three, is uses the, the beads of a rosary. It's shorter. It's given to us by a bona fide saint, Saint Faustina. And um, the Divine Mercy Chaplet is a very potent prayer. The words are very beautiful. They're very kind of august. And uh, again, it's got a track record in producing sanctity in everyday life. So number one, the Mass. Number two, the Rosary. Number three, Divine Mercy Chaplet. Number four, it's what I use in the morning, and that's iBreviary. It's a free app, I-B-R-E-V-I-A-R-Y. iBreviary, you can do the morning prayer office of the church in union with thousands and thousands and thousands thousands of other Catholics around the world praying that prayer more or less at that time, especially in your time zone. Um, you can buy the four volume set if you like. I find it kind of complicated. Even the single volume set I find sort of complex, but I like because I, I need things boiled down to the about the fourth grade level and I breathe, I love. I highly recommend it. Number five, mental prayer. It's not reading. It's not being at Mass, it's not praying the Rosary, or the Divine Mercy Chaplet, or the Divine Office. It's sitting consciously in the presence of God, thinking about His benefits, His graces, His mercies, His goodness to you, in a way that's unplugged. And actually, it's kind of hard. Mental prayer is hard. Because you're not praying a mantra prayer, it's not centering prayer, which, by the way, is actually modified Hinduism. I do not recommend centering prayer, but mental prayer where you're placing yourself in the presence of God and asking for His, His inspiration in the minute, uh, it's a powerful, it's a powerful thing. Start, start with five minutes. See how it feels. Uh, Blaise Pascal said in the 1600s, the great mathematician convert, that all of man's problems stem from the fact that he is unable to sit in the room by himself. It's all the, all the more true today with our ADD-ridden culture and smartphone addiction. So mental prayer number five. Um, number seven. The Bless Us, O Lord. Great track record. My, my dear departed dad, when we were in Rome, 
in 2012, I get to introduce him to Pope Benedict the 16th, and we had a, a short a visit with him, and then we had dinner with Cardinal Burke and Cardinal Arinze and some other people there in, in a pre-cruise trip. And I remember Cardinal Burke opened just a sim with a simple prayer before we began eating in Rome at this restaurant. Uh, Bless us, O Lord, and these thy gifts. And my dad later said, wow, here I am. You know, never really traveled to Europe before, and I'm in, I'm in the presence of a cardinal of the church, and he's, he's saying the same blessing that I said growing up that I learned from my mother's knee. So that prayer is very good to pray, obviously, in your house, but in restaurants. It's a great small bit of evangelization to pray that prayer in the restaurant. Now, I don't mean, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy, and look at me, pray. I'm so pious and thankful, and please notice, and no pictures. Obviously, it doesn't have to be ostentatious, but don't stop for the waiter. If the waiter comes by, get to the finish line. It's a witness. So that's my recommendation. The bless us, O Lord, and these thy gifts, uh, which we're about to receive from the bounty through Christ our Lord. Amen. Small thing, but especially when done in front of others, it's a powerful thing as well. Finally, night prayer. Here's the night prayer that we do with our kids. You can, you can write this down. It's a traditional average prayer, and I want, I want to thank my good friends Mike and Marsha Grimes, who taught me this prayer. Um, it stood their family in good stead and it's working well with us. God made us a family, and then the kids repeat. So, God made us a family. We need one another. We love one another. We forgive one another. We work together. We play together. We worship together. Together, we use God's Word. Together, we grow in Christ. Together, we love all men. Together, we hope for heaven. These are our hopes and our ideals. Help us to attain them, O oh God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So there are seven ideas for you to get your prayer life engaged. Now is all the more necessary a time to develop your prayer life and take it to the next level, to the next step deeper, closer, more authentic, and daily. I'm Patrick Coffin. Subscribe, keep in touch, and be a saint. What else is there?